know, then maybe it's just. But I got to get some. The problem with doing these kind of windows and this kind of an idea, it's, it feels very childlike. Does that make sense? Right. Which can be fine. You can have childlike things. I know I'm always contradicting myself. But this trail was. But then I go, well, maybe like here. Maybe we can do it this way. See if I can do this this way. I don't know if I can. So that's the curvature tool, you guys. So I can take this tool, which is right here, right the pin. Looks like a pin with a line right there and grab something and it'll turn it into a curve ah. which is really handy okay then i go okay what kind of windows do this does this kind of world have if there's a blue sky maybe i can get away with this being blue that's too blue I want it way more muted Maybe, maybe not. I don't like this yellow. I'd change that. Find a fun color. I don't know what. It wouldn't be this. You know, and then maybe I go. I'm going to go here and just go object, path, offset path. Let me a little big, so I'm going to go four point. Turn on and off preview. That's a little better. I'm going to take this one. So it's going to have my central one right there. I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to grab this color. This should make sure that's on top. Now I got a frame. If it matters, I might come in here, flip this, go darker. If it matters. You know, and I could put the little corner things in there. I'm only putting in enough to try and sell it is all I'm trying to do. You know, and then maybe I go. And this could be a lighter value, maybe. Now, color-wise, this isn't what I would do. I'm just trying to figure stuff out. I'm going to take this and put it like, I'm going to group all this. I'm going to lock this to group this. Bring it all forward. I'm going to do the same thing I did there. I'm going to go object. Path, offset path, there it is. Just going to make it a darker value. Not too much this time. And then maybe, like, my baby, 
do something like this. Get some little slats going. Option drag. You might get these lined up somehow. Like these, I have to tweak these. Like maybe I'd come here. And that's this right here is your, uh, it's called a, uh, let's get the name of it. No. I can't, I can't remember the name, but I'll have to think of it. But it'll let me do, you know, like drag corners and things like that. And I would get all these lined up the right way. I'd still keep them a little wonky because I like that. Probably have to tweak the other side. Now, the other thing I like, is I'm breaking this edge right here. You see that? Yes. That's good, right? And this is sloppy, but I would go in and I tweak it around. And maybe, You know, and before that, I would have gone in here. I probably would have done more of a negative shape thing. With this one, I could grab my white arrow tool. And just kind of make it work. I want them a little off kilter, so. But this one could probably follow this line here. You know, and I would just start building things to make some more interesting shapes, right? Right. And then like here. See if I can do this. I mean, sometimes when I go, oh, there's a line here. It's kind of interesting. I might be able to use that for something. Flip it again onto the line. Oops, I screwed up. I had two things selected. Select that. Because then I could go 
Let me see if it'll let me do this. Okay. Mm, I think I like it pointy. Now I'm going to make this into an object path, outline stroke. That way I can take these. Make them make more sense. I'm going to take this same line. Oops. Take the same line, I'm going to fatten it up. You know, and I start building some of these like architectural details here. Yeah. Where'd you go? Yes. Okay, so I keep going. Now, you know, I got to find ways to make it interesting. Okay. See, this is why you got to group stuff. Like, I'm going to group this window. And that's not the colors I'd use for that window at all yet. But I just want to make the shapes. Another thing I might do, like, I might come down here. Oh, wait. Let me come down here. Definitely not the gray I would use, but for now it's fine. And then, you know, like here, I might go. Let's see if we can do this this way. I don't know if we can. There's a lot of ways to do this. Kind of stuff. I'm going to go slightly darker. So up here under effect, there's distort and transform. Okay, so let's go roughing. And you see, it's all slider driven. You can see it roughed up my, my shape a little bit. So let's do that. And then here's detail. We don't want that. That's too much. It's got corner or smooth. I want smooth. I go okay. And I could take some of this stuff. Flip it. You know, and I could start getting myself a little stone. Maybe the bottom part of the building stone. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. This here. See, the thing is, I want to give it just enough information. Like this here needs the, and like I might this. I might make a, and we'll talk about this later. I might put like a little stone edge around it. I might put a wood edge around it, but I'm going to put something around it. And then I'm probably going to come in here and go like, Uh, 
and I can do a couple things here. I could go a little darker. Start to get slats in the door. Again, I could duplicate it and I could put the little light hitting the lip on it. And then I put a big door handle on it. So this, all I got to do is just bring these back down. And I don't mind them draw off tilt a little bit. It's more fun. You know, we start building something that has a little more personality. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. And then look, <clears throat> here's another. This is just little detail design stuff. Once I get going here, I might come in here and go, there's my color. I don't want, I'm trying to get away from just looking like a bunch of simple rudimentary shapes. They can be simple rudimentary shapes, but I got to read them like something interesting. And I'm doing this really happy. You know, and I'll get some shingles on. Does that make sense? Yes. So, you know, or, and then also, let's say I create a whole bunch of these, you know, I create my three or four buildings whatever I need. Then I could go, you know, and I'd have different, oops, scalp. And let's say I have, and I'm just gonna make up some really practice. I got one like this. That's a really true. Now I got one over here, that's sort of, you know, but I build them like that one I just built. So, you know, they have some stuff going on on them. Right. But what I would, I could do is then to reuse those, I could take like this building, you know, all the buildings I already created. Come over here and make a copy of it. I'm gonna go up here to object because I wanna make everything into a shape to do this, okay? So I don't want any paths in. So I'm gonna go path while I have them all selected, outline stroke, now they're all they're all objects. I'm gonna to go to my Pathfinder. I'm gonna to go to Unite. And now I could take, you know, and I would have done these with these other two buildings. Now maybe I go, you know, I just go really simple. And this could be a color, this could be a knockout. I'm gonna do it as a knockout. That's a really good building. And like here, this one could be a clock tower. So I'm going to take this. This would be my building that I'd already built. I'm going to unify it all right here. And this one I can go. I could either do it like, you know, I could do it like that. And I'd put the clock face in it. This one, I'm going to take these four. 
you know, I could either do this and go a little wider in value. That's one way, which would be fine. That's probably fine. Let me say that. On G, this one, I'm going to make this for now, same color. And I put some windows in this one. And now I could take these, and these are my foreground buildings. Let's say these are my foreground buildings. And these would be more, you know, have more information than what I'm doing. And this one could be. Just push this to some other color. There we go. These are my foreground building. And then these I could go, I'm going to group them for now. You know, I want to want to get them away from repeating. So I could flip them if I need to. In this case, I don't think I need to. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to select this gray. And let's see if we can go select. Just remember, it's under select. Same fill color. Now I've selected all of them. And I'm going to go to a blue. And I'm going to reduce the value of that blue. Still needs to be lighter. Probably a little bluer too. And I could start to create just a silhouetted background back there. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's just do this real quick just to so I don't have to find the color. Let's go here to transparency, just so I can make my point. So right now it's competing too much with the foreground. You know, those would go into the background, right? Now I would never have these two sitting next right. to each other like that. I might right. take these and they're bigger or smaller. And then this, I'd probably, I do something with this to make it different. I might even just put another shape here and connect these. Oh, they're transparent. That's why I won't put them. Let's try this. But, you know, I just put a shape in there to obscure that these are the same shape. And I probably put this somewhere else. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, I might, like, I might have a path coming from here. Unfortunately, just grab that point, which I don't. You know, and then maybe I put cobblestones on this, right? That way everything's not just this totally frontal thing, right? Right. You know, I could also have a building coming in this way. Going out of frame, maybe.
you know, I could start to have a building coming that way. And maybe right here, I put a steeple on top of it. So I got a church right in the foreground. And then I could do those cool Gothic windows right here and maybe make them stained glass. Okay. Yeah. And then I could make a right here to in this bottom, I could just put a plant right here, like a shrub. You know, and that would give me some interesting stuff, right? Yes. I put a plant here. Like I come in here. And again, sometimes I raid my old stuff. I could put some of this. To sort of eat up space too. So I'm going to make sure this is all one shape. Right now I want this to just be one shape. So I'm going to go back to my pathfinder. Do that. And I'm just going to darken this. You know, and I could start, I could even, you know, I could put some of this like in front of this, so I don't have to worry about how this transitions, but I'd rearrange it, obviously. But, you know, start to give it some organic stuff also. Does that make sense? Right, yes. Sometimes it's also nice to get something behind some hard geometry like that right there. Maybe have a tree behind it. That way it's not such hard geometry yeah. everywhere. Right. You know, and it softens it a little bit. Yeah. They do have a lot of trees and plants. Yeah, you, just use them, you just use them what you want to use. And then here, let me show you this real quick. So if I built a cool, let's see if I can just do it all at once. I might have to get them all in. I haven't done it like this, but let's just. <gasps> I'm going to try and grab all of these. Oops. All of these. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my free transform tool, I think it's called. Now, this is a weird tool. See how when I go over a corner, it does that wacky arrow thing. Yeah? Yes. yes. So this is a weird tool. It's the only tool in Illustrator that's like this. If I go like this, and then I start to pull this corner, and then I go Command, Shift. No, nope, hang on. I go, I start to move it, and then I go Command, Option, Shift. It will put it into perspective. That makes sense? Right. Okay. And then I could go, I should have done this ahead of time. Let's try it and see if we can do it. Oops, that's too much. Let's go effect, <clears throat> distort and transform, roughen. That's way too much, obviously, right? So, hey, we don't want corners. We want smooth. It's too much detail. Yeah, I would have had to do it beforehand. And then it would have worked. But right now, let's just pretend I did. Okay. And then, you know, if I made a big field of these, first I would get them, you know, so they look like rocks. Right. And then I would do the perspective thing. But then I could have, you know, I could start to get, um, you know, cob uh, cobblestones or something like that. Does that make sense? Right. And I could have my, like we did yesterday, I could have my umbrellas here. That might be someplace where I can get some French blue. Right. Start to get that going. You know, it's just, it's it's really or getting enough shapes together that it starts to feel right. It's kind of what it partially is. See, this is, if you're going to do something like that, then figure out the styling. How are you going to do it? It could be totally simple like that, but figure out the styling. Right. I've never done, I mean, I haven't drawn since I was a kid. I haven't been in school for a very long time. So, what's your, what's your major? Um, uh, right now, just getting a graphic um, graphic design certificate, but okay. I'm going to go for more because I have a lot to learn. 
Um, I oh. was in marketing in Texas for a concert venue. Okay. And I used to do the posters and I only used PowerPoint and everybody would oh. tell me, if you were, why are you using PowerPoint? You should be using Illustrator and Photoshop. And I've never used them before. Yeah. I can't even imagine a poster in, in PowerPoint. That's got to be horrible. Yeah. So, and I did that for country artists. Um, so I moved back to California. I'm from California and I'm like, I put everything on hold, but I'm, I need to go back to school and do something for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just was interested. I was introduced to illustrator this last semester. I took two classes. So it's, I'm like beginner zero. Um, so the this gentleman that I created there, um, it helped the assignment you gave us the Conan. So that kind of helped me to put this little guy together. Um, so yeah, that was my challenging. Yeah. The, okay. So like you've seen, you put the Conan together and it was fine. Mm -hmm. When you have sort of a design to follow, it's not so bad, right? You got to right. just get good at creating that design yourself. Right. Right. Yeah. Because the execution, like you just saw, if you put that together, it looked really good because the design worked. Right. And to me, the execution is the easy part. I, and I know it isn't when you're learning. I get it. But it's just knowing, like, like just like this, I got to have some fascia board under here so it feels more finished. And then okay. I could go here and I could go. Oops. How do I get that? All right, that shape might even work. Let's try it. I can say that this, you know, I got a little support piece right here. You know, and every little thing you do to sort of transition things, you know, from one thing to another helps. Right. You know, and like here I could do something, you know, I'm always thinking, you know, <clears throat> you know, if it's a graphic thing and I'm thinking that way, let me try something here, which probably won't. Sometimes it's kind of fun to get a, um, a more design point of view on it. So let's try this. Brown and blue are two colors that like each other. That's too much, so I'm gonna try and get, um, get a little darker and more de de uh, saturated. A little fatter. And I could maybe this part uh, obviously you'd only be seeing it from here. That's the edge, right? Right. You know, and I'd line these up. They could be a little wonky. So I like that. What happens in Illustrator that people do, you know, it's usually a early thing where they just don't know yet and they they make everything like super rigid super straight and it's like you gotta make things fun looking i don't know why i got that little blue thing you know and then i could just follow this idea And again, this edge right here, I'm not going to leave it like that because it's too rigid. So I'm going to go here, grab the same color. I'd probably change this root color probably. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had two things selected. And I probably let me give myself that little serrated edge for the root. And I don't have a boring flat 
square. Right. I've got a root, but it's simple. Yeah. And then let's go here. Now I'm going to go unlock. I have those things locked. Unlock all. I'm going to go select, same, stroke color. There it is. Pull it forward. You know, and I'm starting to react to, if you notice now, if I put this here, because I do this a lot, I'll put another layer on like this. And I'll call it frame. I'll go, I'll go out here. Right here. I'll select both of these. And I will go uh, object, compound path, if you guys remember that, make. So now this is one shape. And now I just go grab this color. And now it shows me what it looks like, how it's actually going to look. And you see by putting that building there, it kind of helps having that just constant that total frontal thing, right? Right. And I'm just reacting to things. I'm going, I need something there. That's why I put the this uh, path in a curve. It's more interesting than to everybody mm -hmm. would just put a path coming at me in one point perspective. It's not interesting. I need right. curves. I need, you know, could there be a banner? Oops. Could there be a banner? Or maybe there's going to be a festival and they've got a banner that goes to this building. It's hanging on a on a wire right here. Now I got that curve in there. And then another thing I would do is I'd probably, if I did put these in here, like right over here, I designed three little funny looking birds and I'd have them sitting on the wire, right? Right. And then I'm just getting shapes where it starts to look interesting. You gotta be careful with that everything's frontal thing or everything's one point perspective and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like I'm making up that perspective there, but it looks cool. And then I can flip this stuff and see how it looks and make sure it's okay, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that's what I think. Yeah? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so let's look at some. Because I was thinking about this because of hollows, uh, sprinkles. It. So things start coming up as you guys are working through it. That's what we're going to be doing, okay? So I'm going to bring in this. You can do this with anything, and I'll show you another thing real quick. I want to grab this leaf right here. These are vector shapes. And I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to lock it off. Right there, make a new layer. And I want to cut and paste this in. There it is. I want to make it a little smaller. And there's a palette here, right here, called symbols. So here it is, okay? And it's super simple. So all I'm going to do is take this and drag it in here. It says new symbol, I'm going to say leaf. 
I'm going to take it out of movie clip and put it to graphic. And I'll put it on, it's on static symbol, which is fine. Check that out. Now it's right there in my well, okay, of my symbol palette. And right over here, there's a little spray can. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So on, on any of these palettes that have flyouts or any of these um, tools over here that have flyouts, that means they have that little little arrow right there. You can click and hold them. So I'm going to click and hold it and then go here to this little bar and just to hover over it. And it'll pull out that little tool set. Okay. So this first one is exactly what it shows. It's like a spray can. Okay. This next one lets me push them around. This next one gathers them, that shrinks them, or kind of pushes them together. And if I, you know, there it goes. If I hold option, it'll do the opposite. It'll, it'll dissipate, okay? This one lets me make them bigger or smaller. Now, if I go option, oops. screw that. Let's put something up. That's weird. Hang on. Okay. Let's get it. Here. Makes them bigger. Hold option. Makes them smaller. And then this one. Let's make them smaller. This one lets me start to like turn them where they can make more sense from which way they should be uh, sitting. Okay. So I can get them sort of facing the way they should go. This one right here, if I put a color right here, so let's do, let's say this is fall. Let's do something real pinky. This one that has the little paint can kind of thing, it just stains them. It's called the stainer tool. It'll stain on whatever color you, you're using. Let's go, to, let's go to a blue. So it'll do all that. And then this one fades them. So if I touch this, it makes them a little more transparent. Does that all make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So we could go. And you know, these are just vector shapes. You can just make whatever shape you want and turn it into a symbol. So let me get rid of this. I could go. It's really cool. Go to my Pathfinder. It's going to be too much of a sliver, but it's fine. That should be fatter because it's more of a highlight. But
let's just say that I lit one side and shadowed the other, even if this is really just for the reason. I'm going to group it. I don't need it that big. Let's just try it. Yeah. This would depend on you know, what I'm doing. And then I would put this in here. Oops, hopefully I did that okay. Um, let me get rid of this. What are my symbols for? Now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna spread them out in some way that might be kind of interesting. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hold option. I don't want to too much size variation. Let's go here. You know, and I get them more random. Yeah. Go back to some of these tools and start spacing them out and just get them really random. Then I'd go to my stainer tool. Look at this one. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is it better to stain the symbol or is it better to create separate symbols? Like say you're doing a red sprinkle and you're staining them, but would it be better what? to do like... Say I'm doing a white. <clears throat> like right now you're doing a red sprinkle, like only one red sprinkle. But what if you did, like you colored multiple sprinkles is it better to do that way or to stain them? Well, why would I want to make a whole bunch of them when I can just stain them and have the same effect? Oh. Because I'm oh, getting okay. I'm getting multicolor because I'm just making these like in the idea of sprinkles, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm getting all my multicolored sprinkles. That's all I need. Oh, okay. Because otherwise I'd have to manage like one layer of sprinkles and another layer of sprinkles and another layer of sprinkles and another layer of sprinkles and all these different colors. Or I'm just staining. I mean, why do I want to? I want it to be simple. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I was overthinking it. Yeah, we all do. We all do that. I do it, I do it all the time. It's frustrating. Yeah, it is. That's, uh, you have to learn to let go of that. I know it's really hard, but you do it. Really hard to do. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's a symbol tool, yeah? Yeah. I have a question. Um, Maybe. how do you add the little shape to the symbol palette? I just drag you just it. drag it over. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And it's gonna come up and it's gonna ask you, you know, just make sure it's on I think it's static symbol, not movie. It's there's one that says movie something. You want the one that's the other one, graphic symbol, whatever it says. And then there's one okay. other little checkbox you put static. It's not a dynamic object, it's a static object, and that's it. Static object? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, if I take... This, and I drag it into here. 
it's going to give me this. So I name it. It's not a movie clip. It's a graphic. And it's not dynamic. It's static. And then that's it. Yeah? Yeah, sounds good. That's literally it. And then, of course, they have to call it an instance. They can't just call it a symbol. It's so stupid. I don't like that. Okay, so let's look at a tool that you should use very sparingly. And only in certain situations. Hopefully, my computer can handle this. Otherwise, Paula, you got held with it. Oh, no, not again. I will not take responsibility for my own actions. I just will not. <laughs> okay. There's a thing in here that can be your downfall, but hopefully it won't be. And it's called window image trace. And then I'm going to go, and then you got to do this. You got to drop this little thing that says advanced, that little window. And right here, it's showing this. Wait a minute. Let's see. We're going to go ignore color. There it is. So basically, it's just telling it to ignore white. And I'm going to go right here to preview. It's on black and white. Okay. So I'm going to go to preview. Let's do it on a color. Now, this might really push my computer, probably. I'm going to hit preview. Just keep our fingers crossed here. Weird. Everything's opposite on this camera. Whatever. No, I see. So it's got to go through all this crap, and your computer will probably go faster, and it probably hopefully will be faster on mine by Monday. Once I solve this problem, we well, just got to clear your way, cache, huh? You just got to clear your cache. I know, but where is it? <clears throat> What's I, weird is that the Macs have I gotten know, harder. Mac. Mac has hidden a lot of that stuff, and I think it's part oh. of the whole logic. See, okay, see what it did. Yeah. So now I can adjust this. I actually kind of like that. Because it just gives it a graphic look, which I think is kind of cool. But I can adjust this with these sliders here, and I can get it pretty close to what it was. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just dragging the sliders around. Now, um, I could go, oops. Not ignoring white. Let's try some. Still picking up some of the white. Let's do the. So what it's going to do is take any <clears throat> any image <clears throat> and vector. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, here's something interesting, and I'll get another picture of it. I have pictures of it on there. <clears throat> there was a McDonald's I went to, and whoever they hired to do the interior of that McDonald's, it had these big, the whole wall was covered with like a mural kind of thing. And it's like, I don't know, people having fun and drinking soda or whatever they're doing. And the whole place, you know, these big wall sized things, they just took photographs ran them through this filter, 
chunked them up so they looked real graphic, like somebody had done a graphic treatment on it. And that's it. That's all they did. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I just looked at it and I go, that's smart. That person picked up a pretty good paycheck probably for that. And just for him to shit through the smart and the yeah, image trace was. It just, it kind of did this to it where it sort of chunked it up. But again, you can dial it in pretty clean if you want to do it. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, what is snap curves to lines? That's just something it's doing internally. Oh, okay. It's like, I think what it is, is all those things are it lining itself up because now they're all shapes and they got to interlock the right way. I think that's what it has something to do with. Just like this initial pixel clustering. I don't know what that is. It's kind of stupid it even tells me because it's like, I don't know what that means. Okay. And it's telling you all these, it's sort of, it's sort of its own internal thing that it's doing. I guess it tells you so it sort of keeps you occupied. But like, here's what I'm doing. I'm not just sitting here not doing anything. That makes sense. But I don't know what initial pixel clustering is. I'm assuming it's that's how it combines certain shapes, you know? Possibly. But it's just something to do with its internal process. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. So I might use something like this. No, I took out a different color. Okay, so let's go. So what I might use something like this for is, I'm gonna get rid of this and start over. I mean, there's a bunch of things you might use it for. I'm going to put it on black and white. Oh, it's on black and white. I think it defaults to black and white. And I'm going to go. Um, preview. Uh, let's see. Black and white, it goes quicker, obviously. So let's push up the threshold. Let's say that's good enough. Let me know if I get it right. And then I'm going to go ignore color. And you can see it just now it's just a graphic shape. Now to cement this, I have to go object expand. It's going to go object fill. Yes. Okay. Now it's just a graphic shape. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Now, what I might do is do like three, four different trees. You know, so I have a few different shapes. And if this was way in the background, oops, what did I just do? Why is it going back to that color? That's weird.
And I might have a tree line way in the back. Now this would only work if the stylistically it worked right. Maybe I would take this guy and do, you know, flip it. This one smaller than this one. <clears throat> Maybe it looked like part of that tree. And this one. You know, and I might make a tree line back there of a silhouette out in the distance. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's look at something else here. I picked this picture because I know that I can always find a high contrast or a, a black and white contrasty picture of this guy for some reason. Come on. Okay. I think Jim Morrison's an asshole, by the way, I'm not a fan. Hey, where's my, what'd you do with my, oh, there you go. Oh, damn it, hold on. Okay. You minimize the. Okay. Just accept responsibility. All right, look, I don't need this type down here and all that stuff. So I'm going to go to my crop. I'm in Illustrator or Photoshop right now. I'm going to get rid of this excess shit over here. Because you're going to see in a hundred things like this. And I'm just going to try and level out the background a little bit. <clears throat> Good enough. Okay. I'm going to go here and flatten this again. Must be a high res file or something. Let's go to this. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go here. This is just a, you know, something you'd see this used for. Drop my, I drop my advanced, ignore color, preview. It's just telling me this is a really big image, apparently.
you got to remember these things can end up with like a million points if that's too much. <laughs> that looks creepy. Ooh, this looks unkempt. Which he was 90% of the time. Let's just leave it there, even though I would dial it in more. But you could dial it in kind of exactly how you want. Let's put it up high and see what that does. Let's just say we like that, okay? I've got it on ignore right there. I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna go up here to object, expand. Which you see used all the time for shit like this. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Now, why would you do it that way? Mm. Because in this case, somebody who's going to, number one, it's a good use of that tool to make it just a super graphic effect. So it makes sense. It works. But also, and by the way, you can add gray values in there and you can dial in how much you want. You can make it black and white, black and gray, color, and then you can dial in and out how much of that you want. The reason this is smart is that that's, okay, number one, printers love vector, okay? It's easy if you want to make plates from. Mm -hmm. This is going to be yeah. one plate. This can be one plate. That's it, right? It's going to be black, or if I'm doing it on white, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be black, but I'm doing it on a black shirt. It's going to be white or a color. And I said, it's cheap. It's one, it's like I could do this in a garage. I could make a screen in a garage and I'm screening all the boom, boom, boom. And I could knock out 100 shirts in a day. Right? Right. And it's just a good use of that tool because in this case, that graphic look works, you know? And by the way, the logo, I just typed in Doors Logo Vector and I found it. 